Now, Peter Dutton's election campaign is taking inspiration from the winning strategy of President-elect Donald Trump. The Weekend Australian reports the coalition is seeking guidance from Republican Party officials on what worked and what didn't during the US election campaign. The opposition leader is expected to focus on inflation, the economy and immigration. He could target Labor's unmet promise to make power prices and mortgages cheaper in a bid to woo voters. That leads us to this. What will a Trump presidency mean for Australia? The inauguration, of course, takes place in January. Joining me live is former Howard Government Minister and Bondi Partner Senior Advisor Peter McGoran. Peter, good morning. Good morning, Tim. Prime Minister Albanese spoke to Donald Trump the day after his victory. How important was it to get straight to it, to be quick off the mark? Critically important. Uh, Trump is not just transactional, but he's very personal in his relationships. And Albanese would have reinforced our security and geopolitical interests in the Indochina region. Now, you're a former diplomat. Will Kevin Rudd be able to navigate a Trump administration despite his previous criticism of the president? This is elect. In incredibly sensitive and challenging, Tim. Mm. Uh, we are a sovereign nation. We will decide who our representatives are in foreign capitals. But on the other hand, uh, you, you have to have a personal relationship with President Trump, particularly in regard to economic issues. I'm not worried about AUKUS or the Quad or the security issues because Trump shares our concerns about China's hegemony. It's the economic. Trump is going to impose widespread and wide-sweeping tariffs. Initially China, Mexico, but he, could, he will be looking at other countries. Can Kevin Rudd effectively represent Australia's interests? He's going to have to be cap in hand, isn't he? To an extent. Um, he's been ambassador 18 months. He's mm. been building solid relationships with others in the Republican Party. But to be frank, that won't cut it so much as a direct relationship. Should he have apologised and cleared the deck as soon as he became ambassador? I think in retrospect, yes, but that didn't happen. We have to support Kevin Rudd, but at the same time acknowledge that he must because he, he's the author of his own words and mm. you, you reap what you sow, he must overcome the inherent disability. I, I had a ringside seat when Trump in 2018 uh, and 19 imposed tariffs on aluminium and steel imports yeah. into the US. And Joe Hockey, then ambassador, mm. worked assiduously directly with Trump and the, and the Oval Office to rescind that as it applied to Australia. And it's all set out in Joe Hockey's autobiography, Hockey, uh, An Unusual Joe. And uh, there's no doubt about it. And I also was in the room on a number of occasions when the ambassadors for Canada, Mexico, New Zealand sought Joe's advice mm. as to how to access Trump. So it's a personal relationship. But on the other hand, uh, we have to represent our interests. Trump's a more unpredictable proposition in foreign policy terms. Is that potentially a good thing for the world? Look, interesting. He uses that. He uses his unpredictability. Uh, he, he, he makes decisions. He's not a prevaricator. Uh, he, he, so you have to get to him. You have to put your points of view. Um, yes, he will intervene on Ukraine. He will intervene on the Middle East. Uh, but, but, not... but, I mean, trying to solve it in 24 hours is very much an election campaign comment. That, that, that war is not going to be sorted sort out in 24 hours, is it, in the Ukraine? No, but he will tackle it meaningfully. Mm. And if he has to exercise American military might to do so, he will. So, again, it's hard to know uh, what will unfold, but at least we know he is opposed to these open-ended and uh, never-ending wars. Will he be a better president? Last time in 2016, he went straight from Trump Tower into the White House. This time he's done it before. He's been, well, not really in the wilderness, but he's had four years to think about it. He's come back. Uh, he's 78 years old. How much is his legacy also tied up in what happens next? I think overall he will be a better president. He will be much more familiar with the machinery and the instruments of power and the mighty departments of defence and secretary and commerce and treasury and so on. But on the other hand, he's embittered in many ways. Mm. Uh, he has threatened to pursue his enemies within the Department of Justice and the legal system more generally. So if he can control his own uh, worst personal inclinations, he could be a very effective and successful uh, president domestically and internationally. You've lived there, finally. 
what people do need to understand is this Congress is full of bureaucracy. It's, look, he will get the Senate, uh, the, the House probably, but it's all tight, isn't it? It's, it's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of machinery going. There's this sort of, there's governors in different states. It's a, it's a big, big place, America. Yeah, und- undoubtedly. And that was the intention of the, mm. of the founding fathers to uh, diffuse power yeah. so that no arm of government mm. could dominate the entire country. But Trump is in an unprecedentedly powerful position yeah. because not only do the Republicans have control of the Senate and the House of Congress, uh, House of Representatives, but they are Trump's people. Mm. The first two years, uh, between 16 and 18, the Republicans had power in uh, majorities in the Senate and Congress, but they resisted Trump. They will not resist Trump this time. So your argument's a good one, except he has fashioned and moulded mm. and designed the Republican Party in his own image. Yeah, there'll be no shortage of news, that's for sure. And, well, next week, we didn't have time this week, we, we'll look next week as to whether... The Democrats need an autopsy like the Republicans did in 2012, but we'll attack that next week. Thank you. Thank you, Peter.